So good afternoon, Facebook friends. This is Roger from Apogee headquarters in Santa Monica, California. So as you may have noticed, uh, we've upped our game perhaps a little bit in our Facebook Live technology. Uh, today, we're going to try something a little different in this latest episode of Ask Apogee Live, where we answer the most frequently, frequently received questions in our Ask Apogee mailbox. My name is Roger Rabindere. I'm the Director of Product Evangelism. Now, Rob is off uh, doing some very important Apogee work, so it's just me today. But what I'd like to do today is take a little bit more detailed look at our control software. Now, when we released our Element series of Thunderbolt interface, uh, we also released a brand new control software called Element Control. And as you may know, we announced at NAMM, uh, Symphony Control, which is the Symphony I.O. Mark II implementation of this brand new software. So what I'd like to do is take you through some of the great details of the software, give you an idea of what we were thinking when we designed the software, um, you know, what were our goals, and how can this software really make your recording life a lot easier. So with that, let's dive in. Before we get started with the software, though, I want to show you the hardware that is connected. So we have, quite simply, an Element 24. Two inputs, two line outputs, headphone output. Um, it is the uh, two by four version of our Element Series Thunderbolt interface. Um, and it is no nonsense, all performance. It really has performance audio specifications that are measurably superior to audio interfaces that are many times its price. So how did we do that? Well, as you can see, um, we have a very no-nonsense package. Um, all the value is in this audio circuitry that is astounding in its performance. So that means that the software control really um, is really quite important for the Element series. What you see here is uh, the Element series software app, uh, Element Control, with all of the options open. If there's one thing that I really want you to remember about uh, Element Control and Symphony Control is that the software adapts to your workflow. You don't have to adapt your workflow to the software. There are some other audio interfaces where the software really shoehorns you into a really specific workflow. And if you want to work that way, great. But if you don't, you really can't adapt the software very much. With Element and Symphony Control, our software adapts to your workflow. So let me start by giving you a few examples. Like I say, there is that guy who wants to set up you know, multiple direct monitoring mixers, in other words, having a separate mixer from his DAW. Um, maybe he wants to use our FX send uh, feature where I can send a reverb between the low latency mixer that's part of the hardware and my uh, DAW audio software mixer. There are those guys that really want to go crazy, and our software supports that. This is a two-channel interface, um, but as you can see, there are all kinds of capabilities. We can actually zoom in a little bit more. I'm not going to go into s a lot of detail about what you can do, but just know that it's possible to really accomplish any kind of signal routing that you might. Now, frankly, I think most people want to keep things a lot simpler. So let me give you a, a great example. Let's say you're recording a singer at the end of a project. You have tons of software instruments, and your latency is really your uh, buffer is very high. You set your buffer at its highest setting so you can use all that internal CPU. So what you want to do is set up this mixer for a low latency mix with just a singer. So <coughs> let's take this audio interface and make it a lot more digestible. What I can do, I've got this channel view button here, and I can really set what exactly I want to see in my mixer. You know what, I don't really want to see all those little inputs. So I'm going to turn them off. Um, I can also s uh, send up to four stereo mixers from my software, but frankly for this I only need one. I'm only recording one microphone, so hey, I'm just going to turn off uh, all the other analog inputs. Uh, then I'm going to come down, and uh, what else can I do? You know, frankly, I just need one mixer, so I'm going to turn that all off. So now we've gone from this very large window to a much smaller, more digestible window. And that just gives us just what we need to see and nothing more. 
and that's really what is kind of the, uh, what's so special about this element control software. So we're still doing direct monitoring, but we've made things a lot simpler. I'm gonna say actually that most people don't even work this way. What people really want is just really easy control of their inputs and outputs. We find that a lot of our users don't worry about any of this direct monitoring. They are just monitoring through their DAW. Uh, with Logic Pro, uh, it has amazing CPU efficiency as well as our driver. So that's very possible for even you know, pretty large customers. And for that, we have something we call the Essentials window. And let me show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna switch back to my software. Up here, got a bunch of buttons. I'm gonna press this one and that shows me the Essentials window. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open, go in here, turn back on my second mic. So when I go back to the Essentials window, I'm gonna close that main window and just take a look at this Essentials window. Let's take a little bit closer look. This Essentials window ju gives you just that. You've got your analog inputs, one, um, your, both of your analog inputs. I can open this window up a tad to accommodate both. I've got my headphone output and my main output right there under control. Now, you can't see this, but I'm actually using the keyboard arrow of my Mac keyboard to toggle between my inputs and output settings. So I can choose analog one, then I can use the up down arrow and set my level. Pop over the headphones, then set my level. So you have direct Mac keyboard control over those essential settings. I can also use the Mac volume control to set my speakers or my headphones. So it just makes it incredibly simple. I've got a couple other settings here. We're gonna talk about talk back in a little bit um, and also uh, a, an emergency mute. If uh, there's something that happens, I can mute everything really quickly right from this control. So there we have the essentials window. Now, when it gets right down to it, here's how I wanna use that. So let me go to, a, uh, I've got a logic, big logic session here. Uh, let me grab my essentials window. Now the essentials window, I can either ver ha orient vertically or horizontally. So imagine, here's what your desktop's really gonna look like. You're gonna, s you're gonna wanna spend, you're gonna use most of your desktop real estate for your DAW, in this case, logic. And then I can just tuck that essentials window off to the side I've got uh, my keyboard control of my essentials. I can set my input and output levels very easily. I can turn on phantom uh, power. I can uh, go from a guitar input to a mic input, all with that tiny little sliver of a window. Frankly, I think this is a way that a lot of people are gonna work. So that really uh, gives you just a taste of how I can go from a really sophisticated uh, element control setup to an incredibly simple one. Now, another feature that we have added to the control series software for both element control and symphony control is talkback. You never realize you need a talkback mic until you're there recording, the artist is in another room and you're yelling at them or they have to you know, put down the headphones and come listen and talk. So what we've done is we've hijacked the built-in microphone on your Mac um, and then made it, made it so it, you can then route that signal from your built-in mic to your headphones, uh, to basically either headphone if you've got two headphones, and route it to wherever you need it for the artist. Now, let's say you've got a Mac Pro and you don't have a built-in mic, you can actually use any Tor Audio device. So I'm speaking today using Apogee's mic, USB mic. That USB Apogee mic could be your talkback mic in your system. And all the routing of signals and all that goes back, that all happens in our very efficient driver. So all you have to do is choose a destination um, and you've got a talkback mic and you can then from that essentials window, turn that talkback mic on and off. So I can say, hey, that was a great take or turn it off and say, wow, that was a really bad take. But anyway, you can then choose to use your talkback mic wisely or not. You know, whenever you have to learn a new software, um, it's always a bit kind of daunting, the fact that I'm gonna have to, uh, you know, dive into the manual. Here is an incredibly easy feature that is gonna help you learn um, element control and symphony control. And we call it the hover help window. And it's just that. I'm gonna click there, take a closer look at all this. 
So with the hover help window, if I can find it, the hover help window does just that. When I hover my mouse above a control, it gives me that part of the manual that pertains to that control. So here we have a description of the input game control um, of what this button does, 48 volts or SL. What does SL stand for? Oh, it stands for soft limit, Apogee's uh, analog uh, limiting circuit that's been in our product uh, for 20 years now. It's really well known. Uh, and you also have a lot of the reverse. The point is, is that really to learn the interface, all you have to do is drag your pointer um, and learn from the hover help window. Makes it all really easy. Now, it's true that probably some of you are still saying, you know what, I'd really like to have uh, some hardware buttons. For that, we offer this accessory. And this is our Apogee Control Remote uh, Accessory. And as you can see, I can uh, control the button from here, my encoder here, and that's controlling my mic level. I can really quickly get to either my microphone inputs, my headphone outputs, or my speaker output, and then there I've got an encoder. So this is an accessory uh, for the Element Series at 195, um, and with the new Symphony Control, it will be supported for Symphony as well. You've also got these eight user assignable buttons. Um, there are a whole host of functions that you can assign to uh, Apogee Control. Let me just quickly zoom in. We'll take a little bit uh, look at what you can do. So for each button and the encoder, I've got this whole list of functions. Um, and I'm sure you'll find some really clever ones in there for your particular workflow. So that is the Apogee Remote Control. Now, uh, as I said, uh, we are uh, just at the point of, of, of releasing the Symphony Control version. Now, we promised it for March. Um, we may be, it might be March 34th, March 35th. But uh, if you'd like to beta test, we have actually been sending out beta versions of this software. And here's where you need to go. If you send an email to betafeedback uh, at apogeedigital.com, well, uh, we would be glad to send you a beta version of Symphony Control. This is for Symphony I.O. Mark II registered users. I've actually been contacting many of the uh, registered users already, so you may have already received an invitation. So um, we have a few questions. It's always great to know that there are people actually listening. Uh, Carlos asks, uh, do the elements uh, have the same conversion as ensembles and symphonies? This is a really common question. The answer is, uh, element has the same conversion quality as ensembles. The answer is yes. Symphony is always will always be our flagship product, and those converters are a step above all of our products. So uh, the answer is yes for ensemble, and the answer is uh, Symphony O uh, is the better performing converter. Now, uh, someone named Dallas says, "Can that software is that software going to be supported on the Symphony O Mark One?" Um, unfortunately, it will not be. Um, it, you know, it turns out there are some significant differences between the two boxes. Um, and uh, when he also asks, when can we use the Mark II cards with the Symphony Mark I? Well, at the moment, we actually a offer the inverse, which is the Mark I cards uh, with the Symphony O2 chassis. Um, and I suspect that that's what we will continue to do uh, for the foreseeable future. You know, you can purchase the chassis uh, separately. And for kind of the upgrade that you get with Thunderbolt built in, we have lots of option cards um, in the future. Uh, now with uh, the uh, new Symphony Control software, the front panel touch pa uh, touchpad, I think it's a, it's a real reasonable upgrade if you want to keep your Mark I cards and get a Mark II chassis. So uh, unless there are any other questions, uh, that does it for uh, this Thursday's version of Ask Apogee Live. If you have any comments, please do put them uh, in the comments, and we will come back here and uh, answer your questions. So uh, oh, we have a few more questions, and we're always going to take those. Uh, the question uh, Here's a new question that, can the talkback routing feature allow for recording uh, non-Apogee core audio hardware devices? The answer is yes. In other words, as long as it shows up in audio MIDI setup as a core audio device, so frankly, if you had somebody else's USB mic, you could use it. If you had a kind of a cheap USB interface or a cheap interface of any type that shows up 
um, it can be selected as your talkback port. So I think that's it for the questions. Thanks so much for uh, participating in uh, yet again another Apogee, uh, Ask Apogee Live. And uh, we will see you next Thursday with uh, something completely different, I imagine. So thanks again.